हेलो गाइस दिस इज अदिल वेलकम टू माय चैनल मूवमेंट साइंस वेयर आई सिंपलीफाई बायो मैकेनिक्स विद जो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल कंसीडर सब्सक्राइबिंग बिकॉज़ आई सिंपलीफाई बायो मैकेनिक्स हियर एंड आल्सो टॉक अबाउट लॉट ऑफ ऑर्थो टॉपिक्स एंड लॉट ऑफ क्लिनिकल एप्लीकेशंस व्हिच यू कैन यूज इन योर डेली प्रैक्टिस आल्सो चेक मी आउट ऑन इंस्टाग्राम वेयर आई पोस्ट डेली एमसीक्यूज एंड आल्सो पिक्चर्स ऑफ माय नोट्स द रेफरेंस टाइम फॉर ऑल द टॉपिक्स दैट आई एम गोइंग टू कवर विल बी मेंशनड डाउन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन So, so without any further ado let's dive into the topic in this video we are going to talk about the ac joint motion the last video was about the ac joint structure and the ligaments so let us look at the function of the ac joint to begin with what is the main purpose for the motion of the ac joint it is optimal positioning of the glenoid that is when your scapula is present and when your humerus is moving on top of the scapula the humeral head needs a proper base to move on something to move on right so that is the glenoid and this position of the glenoid is very important for a good function of your shoulder joint so that is the main function of the ac joint and also the sc joint that is together they provide mobility to the scapula so that the glenoid can be positioned optimally for a good movement of the humeral head so there is basically 3 degree freedom of rotation and 3 degree freedom of translation at the ac joint if you don't know the difference between rotation and translation you can check out my video on axis and planes where i talk about this in detail so let's start with the translation first because we'll cover it very fast and it's very easy So there is the anterior posterior translation, superior inferior translation, and medial lateral translation. This is very self-explanatory, but still I'll show you guys how this movement occurs. So we know that the articulation of the AC joint happens at the acromion and the lateral end of the clavicle, right? So first movement is the anterior posterior. So this is the articulation happening over here, and this is the anterior posterior movement that is possible at the AC joint. it is very minute you can hardly see it but there is a movement you can see this more properly from the superior view so now i have turned the clavicle and the scapula so this is the anterior posterior movement so the second movement is the superior inferior movement right so this is the superior movement and the inferior movement now this movement is very important because many times subluxation of the ac joint occurs in this movement and uh, we talked about this in our last video too that if the articulating surface is more vertical the chances of the dislocation of superior or inferiorly is more common so this would be the medial and this would be the lateral right towards and away so kind of distraction and compression forces so this occurs if you are falling on the ground so there is a push we talked about this in our last video too there will be a medial force whereas the lateral force will be if you are hanging on the tree or a branch something like that then uh, your scapula will be pulled away from your clavicle and there will be a lateral force so these are the translatory forces that can be imposed on your ac joint now let's talk about the rotatory forces so the first one is internal and external rotation next is the anterior posterior tipping and then upward and downward rotation during internal and external rotation the glenoid moves anteriorly or posteriorly it occurs with protraction and retraction movement and the range of motion is around 40 to 60 degrees let's look at this internal and external rotation of the ac joint on my dad say hi hi so this is your clavicle which is present over here and the internal and external rotation occurs during shoulder protraction and retraction so when my dad does protraction of the shoulder the clavicle is going for protraction as you can see and along with that the ac joint makes the scapula go forward and the glenoid if you see is facing in this direction that is forward direction and this is where the internal rotation of the scapula takes place whereas during re retraction the scapula is going for external rotation so this is your internal rotation of the ac joint and then the external rotation of your ac joint next is the anterior and posterior tipping this happens when acromion goes anteriorly and the inferior angle of the scapula goes posteriorly the range of motion for this is around 30 to 40 degrees so this is your anterior tipping where your acromion goes in the forward direction and the inferior angle of the scapula 
goes posteriorly and then the other way movement is the posterior tipping so this occurs during elevation and depression of your shoulder joint so during elevation there is anterior tipping of the ac joint obviously the movement is not this much but there is slight amount of anterior tipping and then during depression there is posterior tipping of your ac joint the range of motion for this movement is around 30 to 40 degrees and finally there is the upward and downward rotation at the ac joint this occurs around an antero posterior axis to the scapula and the glenoid fossa can go higher or lower that is it can face upward or downward this movement is restricted by your coracoclavicular ligament and the range of motion is around 30 degree upward and 70 degrees downward this was measured in in vivo that is in a human subject so it is very accurate so if you see the ac joint is over here right and when you are raising your arm upward the scapula goes upward right so this is the upward rotation where your glenoid is facing the humerus over here and this humerus basically moves on top of the glenoid so hence glenoid has to maintain the contact with your humerus head of the humerus and this is the downward rotation so during this movement there is upward and downward rotation motion at the ac joint now this movement is restricted by your coracoclavicular ligaments and the range of motion for upward movement is around 30 degrees whereas downward movement is around 17 degrees so now let's summarize the topic we talked about the ac joint movement which was a very small topic the main function of the ac joint along with the sc joint is it provides an optimal position of the glenoid for the head of the humerus to move there are three translations and three rotations Translation was antero posterior, superior inferior and medial lateral in all the directions basically and the rotations were internal external rotation, antero posterior tipping and also upward and downward rotation. That's all for today guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post a new video. Also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. Thank you for watching.